Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today we're going to find out if I can open my first custom-made challenge lock. So let's get started. I can remember when I first started to get into lock sport, I watched on in awe as some of my favourite pickers filmed themselves attempting to get an open on a lock that had been hacked and tweaked by another member of the community. It was the first time I'd heard of a challenge lock. Unlike commercially available units, challenge locks have been modified to make them particularly difficult or interesting to pick, which speaks volumes about the ingenuity and creativity of the lock sport community, as well as how poorly designed most shop brought locks must be. Each lock becomes a bespoke puzzle to be solved, if you have the skill, patience and wit. But I thought it would be years before I'd get my hands on a challenge lock, let alone one which had been specifically made for me. But then this happened. This is Something Fishy, made by UK picker and challenge lock maker DMAC, aka Darren McAvoy, the same chap who recommended I pick up the Trimas 007, a great little repinnable training lock which I reviewed in episode number six, link in the description. But this is a work of art. Darren had mentioned that he was putting something in the post for me and here it is, a lock with my name on it, but can I do it justice? Imagine what a disappointment it would be if I had to pass it on unopened. Do I have what it takes after just a few months of picking experience? I decided to put the lock in a vise to remove as many variables as possible and in order to allow the vise body to amplify the feedback. And then I went with top of the keyway tensioning and a light touch and I selected my favourite Law Lock Tools short hook to begin with, although I also had my Euro Valerian set on hand so I could try a few different approaches. The keyway is paracentric but didn't present too many problems, and the key suggested that this was a 5 pin lock, but I knew going in that Darren had put some sneaky security pins in this thing and I didn't have a clue how I was going to deal with them. Pretty early on in the game, whilst probing the pins at the front of the keyway, I fell into one of the deepest false sets I've ever experienced. But then afterwards I couldn't for the life of me find counter rotation and I had to reset the core several times before I figured out that this was going to require me to manually ease back on the tension to take some of those pins to the shear line. It was already well past midnight and I had an early start the next morning so I knew that I had a limited time available and I really wanted to open it in one take rather than have to come back to it another day. After a while I tried to forget the fact that the camera was rolling, that the clock was ticking and I just focused on what the lock was trying to tell me. And I did it! I cannot begin to tell you the sense of achievement I felt when the core began to turn. DMAC had absolutely nailed this challenge, which was right on the edge of my ability as a new picker. So now, it remained only to take a look inside to see what I'd been wrestling with. If you're a newcomer to lock sport like me, then gutting a lock is a whole new skill set that must be mastered, but hey, how hard could it be? Spoiler alert, tempted though I am to keep this lock in my collection, I want to honour the hard work that's gone into making it by passing it on to others to pick. Who knows, it could even end up on your doorstep. So if you don't want to know the secrets of something fishy, then stop the video now. But assuming you do want to peek behind the curtain, keep watching, because this is where disaster strikes. Growing up, my dad always used to tell me that I should remember the six Ps. Proper preparation and planning prevents a poor performance. I really should have prepared better before trying to gut this lock. I removed the C-clip and inserted the follow without a problem just as I practiced with my Sparrow's progressive lock set. But suddenly I felt some friction, a little disconcerting grinding and a hot mess followed. One of the pins had somehow become trapped between the follower and the core and all of the driver pins fell out in one go. Total disaster. I messaged Darren, confessed my sin, and he patiently explained where I'd gone wrong. It turns out this tiny sliver of metal 
would have saved me a whole heap of frustration. This is a shim, and when disassembling and reassembling challenge locks, it's a must. You slide it in between the core and the Bible when preparing to separate the two, and it keeps the driver pins in the Bible and under spring tension in case there are any gaps between the follower and the plug chamber. Lesson learned. Darren taught me through which pins belonged in which chambers, and so I put things right and started all over again, this time disassembling the lock the right way. And this is what something fishy looks like on the inside. Remember those false sets I mentioned? Well, they were created by these ball and chain pins which slide together and apart. The pinching of the rotating core against the thin joint produced a sudden rotation and the lack of counter-rotation was caused by the fact that the spheres were able to articulate independently of one another. And then there's a whole host of serrated, spooled and mushroomy goodness in both the key and driver pins. To be honest, when I looked at these, I was amazed that I'd managed to get an open at all. Hats off to DMAC for the care and attention he's invested in creating this beautiful monstrosity. He confided that he felt that these pins were a little rough and ready in comparison to what he can create, and here are some of the other security pins that he's made for recent projects. I had no idea that there were so many different kinds of security pin designs and no doubt each one requires a different approach to bring them to the set point. I guess this is why they're called challenge locks. Now, it was just a case of reassembling the lock again using my new best friend, the Shim, and ensuring that it was in full working order for whoever wins this amazing challenge lock because to celebrate the fact that this is my 10th upload and that I'm now the right side of 400 subscribers and heading towards 500, I'm going to be giving away something fishy along with a few other little treats. So keep an eye out over the next week for the announcement video if you'd like a chance to enter the draw. And this brings us to the end of this video. Ironically, it took me almost five times longer to disassemble and reassemble something fishy than it did to pick it open. But I did successfully get an open on my first challenge lock and I'll take that win happily. Thanks again to DMAC for creating the challenge. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. Please do hit that like so the algorithm can pick this video up and recommend it to others in the community. And until next time, take good care.